And so, we meet again. Glad you could join me for this first video in the new Backroads Journal series. It may seem a bit out of step with how I have described the content because I did explain that this was going to be more about our outdoor experiences rather than just focusing on the gear we use. Nonetheless, I did commit to making this video after some viewers asked about this case sitting under my desk. They noticed it was always there and wanted to know, well, what, it, what was in it? Well, if you don't already know, you're about to find out. To explain, after a number of questions about this case, I decided to have a contest to find out if anybody could guess what's in it. I should have been better at giving clues and frankly, should have given more of them. Anyway, this is what is in the case. It's an Uzi. And this video is to review the Vector Arms Uzi and to offer some history on this iconic firearm with a silhouette that is as recognizable as an AK-47 or an M16. So let's start with a bit of history, and this is some of the information I have found. Major Uziel Gall wanted to develop a firearm for the Israeli army with a reduced length. His finished product was a 9mm submachine gun with a telescoping bolt that wraps around the breech end of the barrel. Combined with a folding stock, this design makes for a compact, lightweight weapon, and the Uzi proved popular from the outset. The Uzi gained its fame not only in combat, but also as a favorite of elite forces and security services like the U.S. Secret Service. Special forces had adopted it because they needed something light and handy for use in confined spaces. Sounds reasonable. As is, this really became recognized as a versatile firearm. But adding to the success were three other versions made from the initial platform. The Mini Uzi is shorter and lighter than the standard model. The Micro Uzi is shorter still, almost the size of a large handgun. Another version is the Uzi Pistol, a semi-automatic version of the Micro. So let's get into a little bit more about this particular firearm. The Vector Arms Uzi was assembled here in the United States with new Uzi surplus parts that were manufactured from the 1970s through the 1990s. The Israeli military industry, IMI, stopped manufacturing these firearms in the 1980s, but it did license it to other manufacturers in other countries. This farm is based on the highly reliable and simple blowback operating system. It is a semi-automatic only, having been converted to fire from a closed bolt from the original open bolt, full auto capable version. So officially, it's not a true submachine gun. That version, the full auto select fire version, requires proper licensing from the Bureau of ATF. And obtaining this license, it's not an easy or an inexpensive task. For those of you who not, might not be familiar with the manual of arms for this semi-automatic firearm, it is rather straightforward. So let's go over to the review bench and take a closer look at this firearm. Well, all right, now that we're at the review bench, let's go over some of the details. When you take a close look at the fit and finish of this Uzi, it is apparent that this is a high quality firearm. This model Uzi features a working folding stock. If it had no stock at all and a shorter barrel, it would be considered a pistol. Otherwise, all the working parts are exactly the same. Very modular uh, setup. 
It's also very ergonomic and operating it is quite intuitive. To demonstrate, the safety selector switch, which is located here above the vertical grip on the left side, you can see, let me show you, it has three positions. But on this one, only the S for safe and E for fire are operational. The D position would be used if it were capable of full automatic fire, which this one, this one is not. The Uzi is somewhat unique in that the magazines are loaded through the vertical grip and not ahead of it in receiver in the receiver part here, like many uh, other military rifles like the M16. In development, they found it easier to locate one hand to the other, like this, instead of trying to locate uh, locate another position like like again, up here on the front part of the receiver when loading something like the M16. Very useful if the process of reloading is being done in the dark uh, or even uh, under stressful situations. You know, one might assume that if you need to reload, you're probably in a stressful situation. The magazine latch release is conveniently located at the base of the left side of the grip. There's also a grip safety similar to a 1911 pistol, which must be depressed to fire the Uzi. The cocking handle is located on the top of the receiver in a fashion similar to the old Thompson submachine gun. For ease of carry, there is a single point sling swivel directly above the, the horizontal foregrip. It can also be attached to the stock for another sling carry option. As mentioned earlier, this one is considered a rifle because it has a folding stock and therefore must have a low, low, uh, longer overall length. That's the only reason for this longer barrel, to comply with ATF's regulation on minimum barrel length for rifles. As shown, the barrel is removable and with the appropriate license, again from the ATF, it can be easily replaced with a shorter barrel. It is then classified as a short barrel rifle or SBR. This particular Uzi is chambered in the 9mm Luger but can be converted to 45 and 22 long rifle with the correct conversion kits. The conversion kits have the appropriate barrel, magazine, and bolt face for each caliber and are pretty easy to, uh, to install. The barrel shown here is 16 and 3 eighths inches long and extends the length of this firearm by 9 inches when installed. It has a 4 groove right hand twist of 1 to 10 and it is retained by this large barrel nut which screws down over the mounting flange like so. Insert the barrel, slide that over, bingo. The unloaded vector weighs 7.8 ounces. Some might consider this too heavy, but it doesn't really handle like it's too heavy or cumbersome. From my experience, the balanced weight helps to control the recoil and therefore makes it easier to maintain the sight picture and sight alignment. Sights are mounted with a here with a 100 and 200 meter rear flip sight, and the elevation is adjusted and windage is adjusted uh, through the front sight here on this post. It does have basic sights, but there are more modern options uh, such as lasers, red dot sights, or even a full sight scope, a uh, rifle scope, which could be mounted up here on the receiver. As mentioned, it is compact and only 32 inches long with the stock open, 24 and 3 quarter inches with the stock collapsed. Pretty nice. And there you have it, the iconic Uzi, a unique firearm that is adaptable to a wide range of situations. Simple to operate, simple to maintain, and of course, it's a pleasure to shoot. Now you can see why Israelis and special forces units 
around the world found it to be a very useful firearm. It is reliable and compact for most any close quarters applications that can be easily used by those with, uh, shall we say, smaller stature. While not the best choice of firearms for the task of longer range shooting, it can be used successfully with the longer barrel. If the situation for longer shots to arise, you have, you have that option. I took it to the range and was surprised to see that with standard 9mm ammo, I could easily hit targets in center mass at 75 yards with just iron sights. Imagine how much more accurate one could be with improved optics or simply more practice. The Uzi shows it's versatile and reliable. Versatile in the ability to change barrels and make stock adjustments depending on the situation. Also, the ability to change from 9mm to 45 or 22 long rifle with just a simple conversion kit. It's reliable. It's based on the well-documented, simple, efficient, and easy-to-maintain blowback system. What more could you ask for? As seen in the image above, the Uzi can fit into a discreet case to avoid any unwanted exposure. Most importantly, placing it in a locking case such as this keeps it out of the hands of children. Some people do not have the space or budget to consider a full-size gun safe, so this is an effective and least, less expensive safety alternative, and that's important. Also, a good thing if you prefer the gray man profile and choose not to project the Joe Tactical image. That's always a good choice. Nevertheless, I found it interesting that there was a review of this firearm and the presenters called it pointless. It was good enough for many regular military, special forces, and other elite units. It had to be a proven firearm. If the detractors say it's no longer relevant because it's outdated, then they must also apply those parameters to other firearms with past military origins, such as the AR-15 and the AK-47, or anything else built on the Mauser 98 design, for that matter. These firearms that many firmly believe are worthy of the praise. So why not the Uzi? Perhaps they haven't fully considered that an extremely reliable, versatile, and compact firearm does have its usefulness in this sometimes unpredictable world. Well, maybe they haven't considered this, but I have. Especially when you consider it is a firearm for close-range use, and don't compare it to another for long-range shooting. It's a reliable and easy to operate. And I admit, I was skeptical at first, but after gaining experience with it, I found it to be a very good choice for anyone looking for a home defense firearm. Well, there you have it. The Vector Arms Uzi, an interesting part of firearms history still being used today. A true testament to its reliability and usefulness as a close quarters firearm. You might say one gun, many options. Well, that's all for this first entry into my Backroads journal. If you'd enjoyed it, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. To be notified of any new episodes, please click the bell image. And of course, if you have any opinions or personal experience with an Uzi, please leave them in the comment section below. Before you go, I'll leave you with this old Swedish proverb. It's mostly aimed toward the preparedness-minded viewers, but the rest of you may appreciate it as well. If you buy what you don't need, aren't you just stealing from yourself? Something to think about. Thank you for stopping by Backroads Journal, and I hope you will again. Until next time, be safe, everybody. 
Good day.